Dr. Mokdad from UW is here talking with us this morning. What does the latest data show? So we are about to release new data set at 12.30 p.m. So I'm going to talk to you about some numbers that may change later on. But right now we have uh, about 60,000 uh, projected deaths until August 4th. And we are able right now to release uh, how states can phase from a response to a containment strategy and different numbers, will, different states will start on May 4th. Uh, and it will run till the second way of June when we feel they can go back safely to relaxing some of the uh, social distancing measures. And when you say relaxing some of them, what does that mean? So what we want, uh, we've been saying uh, all along that uh, we can't go back to normal just immediately, like flipping a switch. We have to do it in phases. And what we are saying is you can start releasing some of these phases, one phase, allowing some people to go back to work. All of this depend on several factors. So the first one is in our models right now, we look, we're assuming at that phase, uh, your capacity to deal with uh, the infection level that's circulating in your own community, which is one case per million. So like our state here would be eight cases a day and you are able to trace those eight cases, who they came in contact with, assuming 10, 20 people, trace them and make sure they're isolated, test them, to make sure there is no introduction of the virus again in your own community. So that's what we're talking about. And the phase depends on what kind of employees you want to bring back. And that goes to the state to decide. In my state, for example, right now, we're concerned about the fishing industry. We want the fishermen to be able to go and do the fishing runs that are scheduled right now. When you say um, phases, and, and we talk about the different people who might go back to work, one of the things that concerns me is some other states are talking about opening up some, some fairly high one-on-one -on -one businesses, salons, tattoo parlors, that kind of thing, and talking about doing it this weekend. What do you think about that? I think that's a little bit premature. So uh, ideally, what you want to do is to start in a strategic way. Uh, the first phase should be, in my opinion, uh, should be focusing on our medical system because right now many Americans have deferred routine medical systems. So I'd rather open my, ensure the public that you could come now to do your screening, vaccinate your kids, do your prenatal care if you are a pregnant woman. And the second phase, in my opinion, would be our food security to make sure we are able to produce enough food and we don't have food shortages. And then when you look at uh, what businesses you want to open right now you have to look at what kind of businesses you have if you have a business that people are very close to each other then you have to test all these employees before you allow them to go to work otherwise you're introducing the virus but if you have a business where the employees are separated like agriculture where you have a processing of agriculture that you could separate your people six feet away then you could relax this one the first one but no it's pretty much sure in my own opinion to have a one-on-one -on -one, a hairdresser or a tattoo parlor where people can be in the, each other face without testing that person who's delivering the services. And then people who come may not be tested and could be asymptomatic, both of them shedding the virus and spreading the virus all over again. A lot of us are confused about this testing ordeal that we're going through. The federal government says we have capacity, in other words, enough labs. The labs in the state say, well, that's fine, but we don't have the swabs and the reagents and sometimes not the people or the PPE to do the tests, et cetera. What is standing in the way of us having the number of tests that we need to move forward? You know, again, this is a new virus. We've never dealt with it and we've never had tests for it. So we have to produce right now. So it's understandable that we don't have all the tests that we would like to have. So, I, you know, officially, we would like to be able to test every American and keep testing them, but we're not there yet. So the way we have to do it in a public health and in a responsive way is each state, and we're not there on testing, I mean, I need to stress that, is to look at what capacity they can do right now, look at their workforce and say, who safely I can introduce first based on the available tests. But we have to have this roadmap right now, where we should start, how we should start, based on the resources we have. We don't have all the resources we need, but we should have enough to start and we should do it in a smart way, not to allow the virus to come back. How long will it take us to figure out the overall time frame? For example, if we start on the date that you mentioned with those first wave of things, how long does the implementation period last? 
Unfortunately, we don't know if this virus is going to have a second wave. We don't know if this virus is seasonal. So we cannot let our guards. The second phase that what we're saying move to a containment phase has to be really based on a strong public health surveillance system, being able to detect cases as fast as we can, place them. We're not out of danger right now. And yes, we have to be extra careful until we have enough tests to test all our workforce and say, everybody, you can go back to work and to be as normal as we used to be before. We and don't so have a vaccine. We don't have a vaccine. We don't have a drug. We have to be extra careful. And then we don't want to have a second phase right now. We are really stretched in our resources. And if we can be careful right now, it's based on the long run. It will be more important for our economy to be delayed a little bit to come back online than coming back early and having a second wave. The devastating measures on our economy will be much harder. What can we as individuals do, for example, um, giving blood in a safe way? What would you suggest we think about? You know, uh, I've said before, we should go out and give blood and it's safe to give blood. We all know that they're doing a, you know, incredible means in order to keep us safe as we go and to give blood. We have to be ready for people coming to our clinics and for opening for uh, elective operations when we allow it to happen. So we need the blood. Uh, what we can do as American citizen and people in my state is, you know, do our part, stay at home. If somebody like me can work at home, I should stay at home. If I go out for a reason, good reason, and I'm not going out at all from my house, except like one, maybe once for grocery shopping, cover your mouth and nose, make it at home if you don't have a uh, one that you can buy, and then be assume that you are infected and that you're spreading the virus and don't allow it to go from you to somebody else and keep a safe distance. Everything you touch out there, you should assume it's infected. I'm not scaring people, but that's the reality what we are dealing with. Don't touch your mouth and nose. Wash your hands with soap when you come back. Take off your shoes. Make sure if you came close to somebody else that your clothes you need to wash. Be extra careful these days. This is a novel virus, as we know. Um, what's to say another one isn't along the way next year? Again, we don't know. We've been in public health, you know, in population health, we've been saying this all along that we have to be ready for a pandemic and we have to be ready for an epidemic. And it's my interest as a US citizen to have the capacity in my country, not only to detect it in my country, but to help other countries who don't have these capacities and our might and our know-how to be able to detect the virus somewhere else deal with it before it gets on a plane and come here to my country. So what we really need to do moving forward is to invest in our public health force, invest in early disease detection, invest in surveillance, especially in countries where we know they don't have the capacity, train them, help them, build labs. It's to our own advantage as citizens of the United States. Dr. Makdad, thank you very much. My pleasure.